Hey everyone, it's Mr. Binkley here again, and this is the uh, last section in the functions chapter called Treasure Hunt uh, in the Learn to Code 1 chapter of Swift Playgrounds. So this is the last one, it's called Treasure Hunt. When we look at the map, I mean, it looks like it's going to be quite a doozy. There's a lot of switches that I see right now. So let's check out the directions and see what it's asking us to do. It says, challenge, decompose patterns and create your own functions. In this last challenge, start by finding a small pattern of commands and create a function that calls them. Use that function to start solving parts of the puzzle. Example, and it gives us an example here, function, move, then toggle, move forward, move forward, toggle, switch. Okay. As you find more complex parts of the puzzle, define a new function that reuses what's in your first function then use both functions to solve the puzzle. So, you know, when I think about what it's asking us to do here, it's, you know, you have to take a look at the map and you have to study and look for patterns. I mean, pattern recognition is so important in Swift coding because your, your functions are going to be easiestly made if you, I don't know if that, if that made any sense or if that was a word, but easiest made if you can find patterns, okay? And the pattern that I am spotting right off the bat right now is that every switch is really about two tiles away from byte. Like if I look straight ahead of byte right now, that one on the left uh, in front of him, it's just two, it's up the stairs a little bit, but it's still two tiles away, okay? And then all of the tiles are separated by, uh, or all, the, all of the switches are separated by two tiles. So, you know, that's, I think, where they're coming up with this example here. So if I tap to enter some code, we're going to have to create the function ahead of time. Now, remember, the function is not going to do anything. If I were to run this and create a function and run it, it's not going to do anything unless I call it later. Okay, so we have to remember that. And you can name functions really whatever you want. Now, they give us this example here of calling it move then toggle. I mean, I think I will just stick with that. Whoops. I could have spelled it like that. It wouldn't really matter. Uh, move, <clears throat> then toggle. And it, you know, really, again, it doesn't really matter what you call it. I think the whole key is they are trying to have us call it something that makes sense because it's going to move and then toggle. Uh, so if we, we do the body, and, and you know what? I'm just going to go with exactly what they have there because, again, it's two spaces away for every switch. So it does make sense that you know, if we were going to go and get that to that very first switch that's right in front of Byte right now, we would move forward two times, okay? And then we would toggle that switch, right? So, I mean, that makes sense. And like I said, if I run it right now, it's not going to do anything. It's not going anywhere because I never called it. I'd have to come down here below and actually call the function that we, uh, we just made, which is called move then toggle because that's what we named it in the name section. So move then toggle, it's down below. It wouldn't have been there unless we made a function. And since we made a function, it now shows up. So uh, if I press move then toggle, it's going to call that for my very first line of code. And it's going to do what is in the function. It moves forward twice and it toggles the switch. Now that's great, right? But it, you know, it, that's all it did. It didn't do anything else. And so, you know, I think the whole point of uh, this section is so that we can learn to kind of build off of the last section. And so it, they want us to make another function. Now, in the last section, if you, if you recall from, uh, let's see, what was that called? It was called slotted stairways. There was basically a function within a function. And that's what we're going to do. And I think it makes sense to kind of call this function something along the lines of like solve row. We could, I mean, I, it doesn't really, again, doesn't really matter, but we'll make it make sense. So if I say solve row, you think about this, right? Now we went forward and we collected the very first one, but that that was great, but it, it's still going to leave us a lot of work if we only have that one function. So why don't we make one called solve row, which is going to include move then toggle, okay? Now let me delete this first. I want to come down here and delete that because we're not going to use that that what we tested out earlier. So move and toggle is going to get me to that very first switch that I'm currently standing on. But if I wanted to complete this entire row that I'm on, wouldn't I need to 
turn around, which would be two left-hand turns or two right-hand turns. We'll just stick with left-hand turns. And then I would have to move forward twice, right? And that would get me back to the beginning, the very beginning on that arrow. And let's just run. Oh, you know what? I can't run it right now because I didn't call anything. So now let me, let me run solve row. I'm calling solve row just to see what we have so far. So let's step through the code here. So solve row, it sees, okay, move then toggle. So it goes up to do move then toggle, which is move forward, move forward, toggle switch. Now it's going to continue, turn left, turn left, move forward, move forward, which takes me right back to the beginning which is great, but it didn't get the entire row. So now in my function solve row, because that's what we're trying to do is solve an entire row, why not have him do move then toggle again? Because move then toggle takes him two tiles ahead, collects the switch, and then we can turn him around again, right? Which would be two left-hand turns and two move forwards. So that should actually solve the entire row. Let's run it a little bit faster this time. So there we go. He's moving, then toggle, then he's turning around, then he's moving, then toggling. Okay, now that gets me back to the beginning and I, tie, I turned on two so far. Now watch what would happen if I come down below and now we gotta, we gotta face a direction here. And so listen, there's so many different ways to solve this. This is, again, is just one way that I am deciding to solve this kind of on the fly here just to, to help you in this tutorial. So I'm gonna turn left, and that would then face this row here on the bottom, because byte would turn left. And if I just, I'm just gonna, a lot of times it's just trial and error with coding, right? So let's just see what happens if I do solve row, turn left, and solve row again. Now, it looks like I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take care of basically what looks like a plus sign because I'm solving this row, and now I'm turning left, and I'm gonna be solving, well, it looks like exactly. So now what I can do is all I need is those last two. And sure, I could have made a function that would maybe solve these two longer rows that are going up and down right now. Um, I could have, right? But now I just know I only have two more things to do so why not just go and get those last two? Or I, again, I could have made another function that would have me get there. Now I can just move forward. Whoops, I hit the wrong thing. I can just move forward twice and I could hit my move then toggle because that should get this one at the very bottom, right? So let's see, if I go uh, move then toggle, I'm gonna run this very fast or fastest, okay? So I solve this plus sign again. Again, I'm, I'm only doing one way. There's, there's so many different ways that we could have went with. And then finally, I just need to turn around. And I need to go all the way over and get that very last one. So it looks like, let's see, tile-wise, that's one, two, three, four, back to the beginning, five, six, seven, eight to the other side. So I, and I could just do move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward. I could do this eight times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then just collect gem, uh, or not gem, oh my goodness, we're toggling a switch, okay? Or I could have gotten six tiles ahead and then did move then toggle again. And see, I have pretty many lines of code there. And the whole point of functions is that they are going to save you time if you make functions, well, function the way you want them to uh, because then you call them down below and it's just a lot less work. And like right there, I have all of those move forwards. I probably could have avoided that if I wanted to, coding it a slightly different way. So I'm going to run this and just see how everything, if it works, if I did everything correctly, if I counted the number of tiles right. Let's see. Okay, we're going up here. Now here's my eight move forwards if I counted correctly and toggle switch. And you know, I get the green check mark for it, and that completes the, uh, the functions chapter, which is great. But there are definitely other ways of doing this and even more quicker ways that could have involved less lines of code. And that's really what, what coding is all about. You know, if you can do things in less moves and less commands, uh, just kind of making your functions even more efficient, I probably could have even added a third function if I wanted to 
uh, you know, there's just so many different ways that you could go about coding. And that's one of the nice things about coding in general is that you're, you're, there's, there's really no limits of what you can do. So uh, hope this helped and uh, have a great day.